Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to Brianna Ivy's channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm just going to keep it real. I'm going to keep it so, so real. This is not going to be fun. This is not going to be a fun video. Um, this is going to be a very harsh video. This is going to be a very intense one because there is a, a major problem going on. There is a major problem going on and I've had it up to here, beyond here, beyond where I can even reach. It's time that we take a firmer stance, a firmer stance against what is happening right now. And what I'm referring to is within the trans community, trans activism, within liberalism, within progressivism, within the LGBTQ community. It is disrespectful to what I go through what other people with gender dysphoria go through and it's disrespectful to women and i have a lot to say on it so let's get started let's not even waste time today we'll be talking about autogynephilia to get started we first need to understand what is autogynephilia the definition of autogynephilia is a male's propensity to be sexually aroused by the thought of himself as a female it is a paraphilia that is theorized to underlie transvestism and some forms of male to female transsexuals. This word was originated back in the 80s by a man named Ray Blanchard. Now, let's go a little bit deeper into the forms of male to female transsexuals that he has referred to in this theory. We have two. Let's begin with the first one. The first one is considered homosexual transsexual, trans women attracted to men or male attracted trans women. The characteristics of this group, this is where I fall, um, they are categorized as feminine young boys. They transition earlier in life and they are also motivated to transition due to societal perception that they would be more accepted as heterosexual trans women versus homosexual gay men. We have the next one the autogynephilic transsexual. These are trans women attracted to women. The characteristics of this group, the autogynephilic transsexual, typically traditionally masculine young boys. They adhere to the expectations of masculinity and as they develop throughout their boyhood. They transition later in life and they tend to identify as lesbian Oh, honey, don't we all know about those? Don't we all know about the trans lesbians? Autogynephilia was coined because transvestism had many classifications, including gay drag queens, and also because autogynephiles are aroused by the idea of inhabiting a female body and not just feminine clothes. This is very important. Autogynephilia is a paraphilia, and a paraphilia is an unusual, intense, and persistent erotic interest. Why the hell are we talking about a fetish? I ask myself that same question. I ask myself that question a lot. And where I believe the origin of this fetish dominating the gender dysphoria and transgender conversation, I believe it has come from queer theory. A little background on queer theory. So queer theory arrived in the 1990s via gender studies that the perspective that questions the perception that cisgender and heterosexual identities are in any sense standard. To break down the idea that cisgender and heterosexual people and identities are the standard, are normal. Specifically in relation to transgender people and gender dysphoria is to break down the idea that cisgender is a normal state to be in. That it is the normal state of being for human beings. Already, we see that there's not a lot of logic going on here. We all know that that's not true. Like at some, at what point do we just need to be so damn serious? At what point do we just need to be serious? What about that? What, what, what about being trans is normal? I can tell you right now because I live it. I'm going on year 10. I'm going on year 10. I'm going on year 10 of being trans. What about this is normal? Nothing, zero, none of it. None of this, none of this is normal, but that doesn't mean it's bad. That does not mean it's bad. That just means that it's not normal. Queer theory has absolutely destroyed the credibility of transgender people. 
because it's evident that we are abnormal and people know that. We have eyes. People that are not trans have eyes and brains and they know that this is not normal. But the pursuit of trying to make it so so normal, hence why you see trans women are women, trans men are men, is destroying our credibility. These people look at us and they're like, what are you talking about? I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Just making that clear. More insidious part of this is that the deconstruction of cisgender being the norm or being the normal state of a human being to be in has also deconstructed the perceived norms and traits within true transsexual gender dysphoric people, AKA the birth of everyone and anyone can be trans. Because activism has militarized queer theory, it has also made way for organizations like WPATH, the world organization that sets the standards of care for transgender people and transgender medical services, such as hormone replacement, blockers, surgeries, other things. Because of this queer theory motivated activism, other institutions now have broken down the barriers of trans of transitioning, of transgender services. These activists have pushed so hard to say, this is normal, we are normal, anyone can be trans, everyone is trans, transgender is normal, cisgender is weird. So now everybody had to be like, oh, my bad, my bad, okay, okay, y'all can come in, y'all can come in, get your hormones, get your hormones, like they're gonna start driving trucks around like ice cream, handing out estrogen and testosterone gel. But who is that also allowed into those services to transition? Autogynophiles. Autogynophiles have been welcomed into transition. And as we all know, like I stated about the paraphilic state of that fetish, it is pervasive. It is a pervasive fetish and allowing these people to transition enables it. A thousand percent, it enables it. When queer theory and activism has allowed these people and welcomed them in with open arms and a fucking red carpet, okay? A whole ceremony. What you have is people being allowed to engage in fetish behavior through morphing their body to achieve the fetishized state that they desire. Now that they've satisfied that, they need to satisfy something else within that fetish that is even stronger. And transgender activism, modeled by queer theory, has now welcomed autogynephilia into all transgender conversations and spaces. These spaces advocate for all these trans people, all these trans people to access the spaces of the sex they desire. Autogynophilia being welcomed into trans spaces, trans activism is pushing for everyone to access the desired space of the sex that they want because if everybody's trans and everybody's, everybody's a real woman, everybody's a real man, then everybody should be able, allowed to use those spaces. Therefore, who is walking right in with open arms? Autogynophiles. This is absolutely dangerous. This is beyond dangerous. This is critical. And I want to make it clear that if you look at it on paper, you can see that it doesn't sound that bad. I can understand where some people are like, mm -hmm, like, it's just a fetish. Like everybody has fetishes and kinks. No, this is where we need to get it clear. Have allowed queer theory to model the framework of transgender activism. You hurt real trans people because you have allowed people with a fetish that also want to achieve transition for sexual motivation into this space and therefore the things that we ask for, they're also right behind us. Benefiting from it and using it in nasty, vile, insidious ways, disgusting ways. As defended by queer theory to promote them to transition because the idea that anybody can be trans. So now these people have to stand 10 toes down behind it. They have to stand behind that politics. They do. That's why, and we'll get into it, when autogynophiles do nasty, vile things, these activists are mute. These activists are mute. 
They do not care because they cannot sacrifice their ideology that they worship. Talk about it in conversation, the trans cult, the LGBT mafia, the alphabet mafia. It absolutely is religious in nature. It is cult-like behavior because what they worship is the ideology of queer theory and it has become a theology to them. And therefore, they cannot condemn an autogynophile. Autogynophiles follow the exact path laid out for them by queer theory and by these activists. They can't say anything because these autogynophiles hopped right on the bus and took the right route. They followed all of your principles. Everything you advocated for included them. When you see how this pops up in our society, they are silent because they worship. It is religious to them. It is worship of queer theory and this activism. It is their being. They believe this so deeply to their core that they will allow disgusting, vile behavior to happen in the public. We have to take it. Genuine people that struggle with gender dysphoria have to take it. And I have to, I have to sit here and allow these people to make everyone in America and across the world think that we're predators, think that we're nasty, think that we want to, to terrorize women, think that we want to trick men, think that we want to do disgusting, vile things. They think that me looking the way I do is because I have a fetish. And they look at me like, oh, well, she's about to turn into a predator any day now. Meanwhile, people that live with what I live with, we struggle. We struggle every damn day. We do to sit here every single day and I look at myself and I know that I am a biological man yet I want to look nothing like that is painful mentally because you live with it every single day. It goes with you when you're out Side, when you go to school, when you go to work, when you go to the grocery store, when you go to the mall, when you go to the bar, it doesn't matter. You will always have that in your brain. And for these activists to allow people motivated by a sexual paraphilic fetish into this and co opt and hijack what we have been trying to fight for for decades, for people to just think of us, not forget our humanity. We're not even fighting for people to think we're normal. We're fighting for respect. We're fighting for people to just hold on to their humanity when they look at us. But let's get into exactly how this manifests in real life. The first example I wanna talk about is probably the most infamous one honestly i mean this person leah thomas leah thomas was the swimmer that joined the women's team with barely any transition literally just started hormones and has exhibited very clear autogynophilic behavior while also being absolutely disrespectful to women in the process i am going to show you and i credit um jake crane he posted a thread of all of these details and images that Leah has liked on Instagram. I'm going to link it below. It's wonderful. Thank you so much, Jake, for, for putting in the work to make that. But I'm going to link it below because there's also information about Leah Thomas's girlfriend and some of the really weirdo shit going on with them. But it's, I'm not going to focus on all of that. I just want to focus on what's going on with Leah show just two examples. I'm going to look at one image here that is a photo of a young girl with a bulge and an erection in her dress. And literally on the image, it says AGP trans. Are you kidding me? Are you serious right now? You're joking. Like you're absolutely disrespecting my face and disrespecting women in the process. There's no way this is serious. And notice where the activists at, where the trans, where's the trans community at? Mm, mute, mute and silent and zipped. They're zipped. Everybody's like, no, but whatever, trans women are women, trans women are women. What about this? What about this? 
Because if you acknowledge that you're an autogynophile, you're acknowledging you're a man. So what now? So what now? And don't give me that, oh, it's a sexual orientation. No, because their orientation is heterosexual. So who are you trying to fool? Not me. I'm not that stupid. There's a lot of people that are that stupid, but I'm not. The next one. Leah Thomas likes, in, likes another image. Talking about sexuality with my HSTS friends. So basically that would be like me, a homosexual, transsexual, or a trans woman attracted to men. Versus talking about sexuality with my AGP friends. So one is having like a, like a, I guess, philosophical, like in-depth conversation, like a deeper beyond surface level conversation. And the other one is just sex and fucking. This man is a proud AGP. This is a proud fucking AGP. Liking images that even reference homosexual transsexuals and AGPs. Leah, you did your homework. Leah, you did your damn homework. I'll give you that, girl. Boy. Ooh. Because <laughs> you, you know the words, honey. This man knows the words, knows the terms of the theory. And yet you are sitting up there raking in all the trans love that you're getting from the liberals. Make me sick. You make me absolutely sick. How dare you? How dare you stand up there in the media and, and take Riley Gaines' rightfully earned award away from her disrespect her in front of the in front of the entire world and say that you're doing this for trans women you're doing this for women baby you're not even a woman not even a trans woman so let's let's get that out of the way it gets worse it absolutely gets worse because look look what we have here leah thomas exposed male genitalia in woman's locker room at a swim meet let me make something so clear to the people that don't know to the people that are new to the trans world, let me tell you something. Trans women that are genuinely trans women, I would much rather get hit by an Amtrak train than ever expose my old penis to anybody. I never did. I will tell you that if there was any day I never used a woman's locker room when I was in high school because I did gym online because that's what the real trans girls did, okay? We got the gym credit online because do you think I'm about to go into the women's locker room? No, absolutely not. I was not even far enough into a transition. I did not pass and I also still had penis. Even I knew, I knew to go out of my way to go take PE online because I was like, there's no way I will subject myself to that humiliation or other girls to something so outrageous. Yeah, you have these fetish autogynophiles that walk in there loud and proud dick and balls out. Dick and balls out in front of girls in a space where they should feel protected from that. You're disgusting because ask any actual trans woman, they would rather, they would rather sit on 15 razor blades than ever expose their genitalia in a setting like that. Maybe in private with a sexual partner, that's different. But in a, in a locker room, in front of that, in front of all these girls and women, there's nothing more terrifying. Even just thinking about me having to do that back when I still had a penis. Oh, oh, that's like 25 9-11s in one. Look at what else that now we've allowed this trans activism to do. We've allowed these fetish people to march in streets loud and proud and demand everything handed to them. Look what we have here. Trans woman sexually assaulted a shelter resident at a woman's shelter. At a woman's shelter. This disgusting man, because of queer theory, because of the LGBTQ community, the left, progressives, has allowed autogynophiles to walk right in, walk right in hand in hand and said, give me all your shit. Give me all your trans shit. Everything that you guys have been suffering and everything you guys have been going through, just trying to get basic decency and respect. Yeah, hand it over, hand it over. We want to do what we want. Give me your medications. Give me your, give me your surgeries. Because now that I'm looking like this, oh, now I got to go take it out even further. I got to go do more. It's not enough. I told you guys. This is a paraphilia. It's never enough for these people. And look what we have here. Disgusting man 
with a ratty ass wig on assaults a woman in a woman's shelter. How vile do you have to be? How vile do you have to be? There is nothing, there, there are a few things. There, I don't even think there's anything more vile than a crime against a woman like this. This is disgusting. And for you to end, for these people to even report trans women, that shows you that we have a fucking problem with pe what people think a trans person is. Because we have warped it. And it is destroying us. It's destroying our credibility and our reputation. I feel disgusted looking at this. Because now the world thinks that this and him, me and him, that we're twins, we're sisters. And another one. Transgender woman convicted of sexually assaulting a 10-year-old girl in a bathroom. How sick do you have to be? Like, I, I think I'm just going to repeat myself again. D disgusting and vile man. A disgusting man. That's the first thing you should learn if you're going to be a trans woman is how to respect women. How to have basic respect and decency for women. You're trying to transition into one. What the fuck? You don't even think about trying to respect women? In that process, idiots, because they're not trans. They're nasty people with a nasty fetish that we're allowing to be fed. And now a 10 year old child, a 10 year old child have to be a soulless, worthless, vile piece of garbage to harm a 10 year old child like this. And everyone on the activist side, on the left, is silent and will not call it what it is. This is an autogynophile that we have allowed to do this. Our queer theory, leftist, progressive religion, we cannot call this out because then it breaks down our religion. So we will allow crimes like this. We will allow women and children to get hurt because woke, woke is right because woke before all sick and another one this one is like we all know about this female prisoner sexually assaulted not even going to say the word by by a trans inmate look at this now since everybody can be trans you gotta say you, these people these people are literally getting booked are getting booked in the county jail and five minutes after they get their mug shot taken are like wait i'm a girl my bad y'all Okay, ship them to the women's prison. And this is a grown man. It don't even matter. These be grown ass men. These be grown men. Not a drop of estrogen in that body. Beards, five o'clock shadow. Big ass dudes. Gotta say it. They just gotta say one thing. They just gotta say, I feel trans today, y'all. Okay, women's prison, sweetie. And some, and some of these people are literally going in there for sex crimes. Are going in there for assaulting and hurting other women. Are you dumb? I don't even care if you're a genuine trans woman. If you commit a crime like that against a woman, man, prison, you're going back to your male self, you're going back to your biological sex, I don't care. I don't care. That's the first thing y'all should know. If you're gonna be a trans woman, respect women. I thought that was pretty clear. I thought that that was obvious. Guess not. Wanted to highlight these things. They're not actual occurrences, but these are things I've found, I've seen online and they paint a clear picture of the problem we're facing. I'm going to read this. This is a Tumblr post from an autogynophile, very obviously. And of course the username Angel Left Wing. Ugh, thank you for making the politics known. We already knew. Baby, you didn't have to say a word. The leftists don't got to say a word. We can tell. Blank should be legal for trans people. I want to hold down a cis girl's throat and fuck it while a trans girl groans and shoots her cum deep inside its warm. Trans people are fined $10 every week. They go without blank a sissy to put in its place so they all gang up on one poor little cis woman to take out all their frustrations on. Cis people live in terror. Every cis person is not a she or a he, but an it. The constant blank, leaving every traumatized sissy with a distant, vacant look in their eyes. When a sissy clocks a trans person, it gets on its knees and begins to suck, hoping that this will please them and they won't resort to violently blanking it for fun. I had to read that out loud 
because I wanted to make sure we all heard it, make sure we all read it, so that we all know what this is. It's vile, disgusting, gross. To even type shit like this, jail, prison. No, not even prison. Don't waste taxpayer dollars. Don't waste taxpayer dollars. No, death row, 24 hour death row, FedEx, first class, ship it out next day, death row, lethal injection, administered by me. And I'm a whole trans woman, I'll do it myself. Line them up, line them up. They're y'all getting the injection today. I'll mix it with a little bit of the COVID vaccine too. So it really kicks in, okay? I didn't mean to be, turn this into a joke. It's, this is disgusting. And I just wanted to show you the conversations taking place online. Another one, there's also stuff, there's also an AGP Reddit. And look at this. Is anyone on hormone replacement therapy but still lives primarily as a man? Been, they've been on hormones for a year. They don't identify as a trans woman or anything fancy. I tell people I'm gender fluid or a cross-dresser, but honestly, it's mainly to just move along and not make a big deal about things. At the end of the day, I know I'm AGP. I love being on hormones and what it's done to feminize my body. Look, look at this. Because of the everybody can be trans agenda and motto, everybody can get hormones. And are we really going to sit here and act like this person once they are on these hormones long enough and they look at their body, that's not gonna satisfy them anymore. This is a pervasive, persistent fetish. They are going to do something else. It is guaranteed. Another post. My AGP isn't AGP anymore. It's a bigger problem. While, while growing up, I had an emasculation trauma. Later, when I was under such trauma at 16, I cross-dressed and masturbated later I felt disgusted of myself. And sometime I imagined myself as not woman, but what a woman will be if she gets harassed or seduced. I got arousal by anime girls getting touched and seduced. There was a little element of AGP, but my trauma acted as a sexual trigger. And it, it goes on and on. And it's it's it, absolutely the fetishization of women, of of women. That's what you're, That's what you're looking at. He imagines kissing a girl's body in his own male body. And people are trying to sit up here and compare and say that we're all trans. We're all trans, so me and this are the same. Like, let's stop being stupid. Because I know America is not this stupid. I know the world's not this stupid. That's why That's why everybody don't like trans people. It's cause, because the leftists, the trans cult, and their, and their queer religion, they cannot say no to this shit. They can't say no. Because then it breaks down their religion. And look at this. We have a very clear indication of what this is and what this implies. And this person's going to take hormones and it's going to enable it and it's not going to be enough. And then there's one more. This one's actually sad. This shit is ruining my life. I can't fucking function anymore. All the things I was once passionate about, all the things I dreamed about, and my love for others, everything has just been lost in this long, long battle. I can just feel that I'm losing myself. I don't feel like myself anymore. I don't even feel like a fucking human anymore. I just feel like a sex-driven, horny freak who can't hold a relationship for more than six months because AGP just has to peek his head. Everything I've just said this entire video, yeah. But, but don't tell don't tell an activist that. Why don't why don't they bring this up? These are the people that that have access to hormones now. These are the people that have access to services now. What do you think is gonna happen? His AGP is literally eating away at his skin inside like a cage, like a caged animal. The second that we permit this. What do you think is gonna happen? All the vile crimes I just talked about before. To wrap this up, I'm absolutely disgusted by autogynophilia. I think that we're all, we're all being way too soft on autogynophiles, and I'm not, I'm not anymore. These people have made it abundantly clear, and I don't know how many times they have to make it clear, that this fetish consumes them, it consumes their life, and the queer theory religion has now allowed it allowed it to hold the title of an oppressed group 
So now every every activist in this entire community is allowing them to live it out, is allowing them to live it out because they're going in line with the politics so they can't say anything. And look at what has happened. How many women have to be hurt? How many women have to be assaulted? How many trans women have to be disrespected for all of us to wake up and call this what it is. It is disgusting and it is in line with another fetish that we all demonize, one that's also that's one that's against children. I'll say it. They're quite close. They are quite close. And I and I'm done. I'm done. I'm done I'm done being nice to these people. I'm done being nice to these people because they they clearly have no respect for me as a trans woman. They clearly have no respect for women. So why are we being nice? I'm not being nice anymore. I'm calling it what it is. This is disgusting and it should not be permitted and we should not feed into it. That's all I have to say on that. I am sorry that this got so intense. I truly, like this was out of character for me, but it's really important. It's very important to me. Um, this is disgusting. And so thank you all for taking the time to watch this. I will try and do something more lighthearted in the future. Um, but this was really important to me. So thank you guys.